This will be, to my knowledge, the first impact wiring solutions ECM fitted to a 2024 touring bike here in Australia and tuned. Now guys, I know some other people here in Australia have been fit, have fitted these ECMs and they're still, they get to tune them and muck around with them. So to my knowledge, I'm the first one in Australia to fit and tune one of these ECMs. Let's get into it. Rightio, so most of you are probably aware the 2023 CVO models have the new centre-cooled M8 engine from Harley-Davidson with variable valve timing. Now, all 2024 model tourers and up have the same centre-cooled M8 engine platform. However, the standard touring range does not feature the variable valve timing. It is still only in the CVOs at this stage. Now, guys, most of you are probably aware tuning capabilities for these bikes is very limited. I've done some small experiments with some of these bikes uh, with Screamin' Eagle's own uh, tuning module. Uh, now, while it does offer some initial adjustment, uh, originally when it was released, there was no adjustment. It was just basically a flash tune you put in and that was it. Uh, since then, there's been some revising done to the software and all the rest of the stuff that goes on. And there is now some adjustment uh, available with the Screamin' Eagle tuner. Unfortunately though guys, uh, it doesn't offer a target air fuel ratio adjustment. It is a set target air fuel ratio. There's some adjustment on the VEs and, and some timing and that's basically it. Not enough to do some high performance stuff on big bore applications. Right, so that leaves us with an open hole in the market for a lot of these aftermarket guys to come and fill. Now that's exactly what the Impact Wiring Solutions standalone ECM has done. Now guys, to my knowledge, uh, Thundermax are still working on a replacement ECM as well, and PowerVision have things in the development stages as well. Now, I'm really excited about this uh, Impact Wiring Solutions standalone ECM because from what I've been told and the research I've done, uh, it's been very, it, it integrates with the bike very seamlessly, has full customization and adjustability, all the parameters and more that you need to adjust and tweak uh, there uh, and as I said the full seamless integration with the bike everything still works all the hand controls with the infotainment system uh, Cruise control or everything works as far as I'm aware. So guys today's video We're going to be installing a CR483 camshaft from Alpha performance engines and a full-length uh, two-into-one Bassani pipe a couple of other additions guys where uh, the customer has uh, supplied his own dark horse compensating sprocket his own uh, primary chain tensioner, manual primary chain tensioner, uh, rear upgraded cush drive for the uh, isolator sprocket. And we're also doing the new impact wiring solutions replacement ECM. So let's get into it.
as you can see, it just directly bolts up, where, uh, just clips into where your OEM original, where your OEM ECU goes. The uh, replacement one just fits straight in there. We communicate here through our serial cable and uh, pretty straightforward. So guys, we're gonna get into this tuning and uh, see what we can come up with. So far, I've got to say, I'm very, very happy with how it responds. It's very fast to program and make the adjustments and the live tracking is quite fast. There's a lot in this thing. As, as a standalone ECU uh, offers a, a lot of different adjustments than you get over a factory ECM. So there's a lot in this thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to go through it all in this video and unpack it all for you guys, but it is, uh, there's a lot involved there. There's a lot of adjustability. Uh, we'll do a little bit more tuning and uh, we'll get some final results for you and we'll go through it. Righto guys, well I'm pretty happy with where I'm at at the tune so far. I'm about to go for a ride on the road uh, to see what it feels like. It feels very, very, very responsive on the throttle uh, and the, the results here, this is the highest horsepower 483 camshaft I've done in a 117 cube. So let's take a look at the results. Righto guys, so there we are, 130 horsepower, 137 foot-pounds of torque. Beautiful torque curve, just whack from the hit smooth as plenty of torque available and as i said that's the highest horsepower 483 i've done in a 117 typically they sit around that 120 early 120 horsepower mark in the 117s that i've done before and uh the torque's actually up a little bit too so highest horsepower highest torque performing cr 483 i've done in a 117 of course i've done done them in 128s that have made more uh the bassani full length bassani two into one on here sounds great guys so uh, one thing I do want to go through at the end of the video, I'm, I'm going to go through some of the software and give you guys a bit of a look. Yeah, let's go for a ride on the road and uh, see what it feels like. and have a quick chat about my initial reaction and, and impressions on the bike it feels outstanding the throttle response is 
on point there is no issues with that whatsoever uh, the power delivery is silky smooth just as it should be when it's tuned correctly but uh, look I'm very very excited about this all the integration on the uh, infotainment system is remains there your mode settings are all still there the traction you know, everything is still there just as the factory bike uh, I can't fault the system yet. It does seem to work very, very well. I have had a few uh, start problems every now and then. It, it will just crank and won't fire. So I, I think I might need to go back and just revisit uh, something in the trend there, just some IAC steps or some cranking fuel just to see if I can sort that out. But other than that, guys, I can't fault it. The thing, it, it absolutely beautiful to ride, silky smooth and very, very responsive. Probably not going to get many clips today out here riding around. It looks like it's about to start raining any minute. Just just the way it is. Every time I want to do a, a quick video on the bike out and a ride, it looks like it's going to be a rainy, poxy day. So, look, sorry, guys. I'll, I'll try and get as much footage as I can. All right, guys. So, I've just uh, taken this bike for a second test ride. Guys, I can tell you now, uh, we have had a few issues with getting this thing uh, starting. Uh, now, I've been uh, on the phone uh, to the manufacturer of this product uh, in the States, Ben, and I've had some great support with him. Him and I have been uh, putting our heads together online via um, uh, any desk bed just so we can use the computers together and uh, go through some of the changes. It was just one of those intermittent things. Some bikes, everything's a little bit different. The map sensor, we had an issue which with the map sensor here. Uh, we've got that sorted now. The bike fires up perfectly every single time. I want to shout out to Ben from uh, Impact Wiring Solutions. Thank you so much for uh, sticking around. It was like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night in the States while you were talking to me, trying to get this thing through, going through data log stuff together, looking at all the data, trying to put our heads together, working it all out. Uh, and in the end, we uh, Ben's come up with the solution. We changed the map readout angle uh, and uh, got this thing to fire up straight away. So really happy with that, folks. I'm going to give you a full rundown on the software uh, shortly. So um, I'll take you through that and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is what you are going to see when you get the software opened up. Now, just at the moment, you do see this notification here that says not connected. Now, that is because uh, while I'm filming this, I'm just not currently connected to an ECU. Currently, all these gauges here are just set up just in a pretty basic format, just a few things that we're looking at, front and rear, AFR, engine temperature, ignition timing, knock, front and rear, and our throttle position. All these are customizable with a huge amount of options, guys. A lot of this stuff, like you can see here, every single menu, uh, every single option has another menu that drops down and just goes through a heap of different sensors that we can look at or, or monitor just about every single thing. But just for today, we're just going to be running through a basic setup here. Uh, our base engine, this is basically where we set up our uh, displacement. So in litres, so 117 cubic inch bike is round figures is 1.9 litres. But every time you make a change and you want to store that to the ECU, just hit burn. Now, the, a limit here, so we can set up our RPM limit setting here, so 6,500. We can pull that back to 6,200 if we want. Just literally type that in and tab away and then hit burn down the bottom here, and that will put that setting straight into the ECU. Now, there's not my, there's a fair bit of other stuff I will go through on a more advanced walkthrough of this software and the setup, but just for today, I'm going to keep it real simple, and we're just going to go through the basic setups and tables here so rear ve table so our rpm limit across the bottom and our map pressure rising up on the top here on the left hand side so for those who aren't really aware what we're idling between 800 and 1100 rpm and typically we're going to be sitting around 40 maps somewhere around there 30 we could be idling anywhere in these six cells depending on the engine and restrictions of intake but typically, we're going to be idling somewhere around there. So these values here will be changed to try and adjust the air-fuel ratio. As we're riding along, we're probably, you know, our RPM increases. We're going to be still over here somewhere in the map pressure, somewhere there. And then as we whack the throttle open, we're going to jump up here and then run across the top as we do a little wide open run. Uh, so that's a basic view of a uh, VE table. Of course, we have one for the front cylinder as well, very similar. And, of course, our target AFR table. Of course, we've got our ignition table here. Big thing that's overlooked by a lot of tuners is the um, ignition table. Uh, we do have a, a launch control setup. So this has a two-step in it. It does work. I've tried it. It's cool. 
Uh, you can set it up here, true or false, yes or no, basically turn it on or off. We want to turn it on for this demonstration. Gives you a few options of how it wants to work. We have a clutch switch on the Harley. The ECM knows that, so we can select clutch down switch. Throttle limit, so uh, sorry, speed limit. Any speed over that, it is disengaged. Uh, launch RPM limit, we can dial that into what we want. I just had it set at 3,000 to try it. But most importantly, over here, you will want to do this. So go to your controller menu, scroll down or pan down to your CHD, click on that. Now over here, it says VIN number. You will get a VIN error reading on your dash if you do not have your VIN number typed in here and burnt into the ECM. So grab your VIN number, type it in there, hit burn, away you go. There are a few other settings in here with the cruise control to really dial that in, which is really exciting. I'm very, very excited about how we can dial in the cruise control on this thing. But that's basically it, guys, for a basic walkthrough of the software. I do, uh, as I said, want to do a full in-depth uh, walkthrough to i guess tutorial of this software and some of the key features about it because there is a lot involved in it guys it, it will be a it will it will be a long video no doubt because there is so much to go through and unpack but the more i am involved and use this software and chat with ben uh in the states about it the more i'm just blown away by its power and potential so uh, stick around for that video when it comes out. It will be linked in the description of this video. Righto, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a, I had a great time doing this. It was stressful from time to time during that um, that start issue, that intermittent start issue we were having. Uh, but as I said, with the support from Ben, uh, we were going through some data together, and we and you know, Ben came up with the solution of the map readout angle was incorrect, and we got that sorted. This thing fires up now perfectly. So. Uh, at the time of recording this, uh, I'm yet to chat to Pete. Uh, he's on his way back down to Sydney. So I'm yet to talk to him about how the bike's actually run on the way down and any, uh, any concerns or issues that he has to report back to me. So yet to hear about that. So uh, hopefully there's none, if any. Uh, I'm sure if there is, we will, uh, I'll be working with Ben uh, from Impact to help develop this uh, ECM a little bit better as these things evolve. Uh, I just wanna have a huge shout out to Peter Thank you so much for being the first one to bite the bullet on this ECM and take a risk on this. I mean, it is a huge expense, uh, but without you making that leap, no one else, like someone's gotta be the first one to do this, right? And Pete jumping out there, having the go first, the patience Pete displayed here, and he stayed an extra couple of nights because we just had to get this thing right for him. Uh, you know, but now that we've got that sorted, I'm sure the more of these I do and we refine the software as we go, the better this is going to be for everyone. So huge shout out to Pete. Thank you so much for making the trip up and trusting me and Darling Downs Harley Davidson to get this work done for you. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, uh, leave a comment, any questions. My email details are all in the uh, description of the video. If you haven't subscribed, please do, it's free. It helps drive the traffic up on the channel so we can uh, get some more viewers and bring more content like this to you guys. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.